All right, so we'll continue. Next is going to be your daily journey with God. This music I have in the background, it's uh, called Claire de Lune. It's a song that I heard shortly after my mother passed away. And it was pretty amazing. Because I don't believe in psychics. And I sure as heck am not psychic. I don't believe I see anything that anybody else can't see. Everything is there. But shortly after my mom passed away, I was at the gym. And I was listening to my iPod. I didn't even know I had this this particular song on there. This song, I have a long extended version of it on my uh, shared videos or whatever. And I'm listening to it. It just happened to come on. And I saw my mother dancing with this beautiful, beautiful man. There's nothing sexual, nothing bad about it. It was just, it was amazing. And this is all in my head. That could be the answer. But one of the dancing scenes, she's in this huge field. And she's wearing a traditional Ukrainian wedding dress. And she's young. And she's dancing with this man. And she's just elated. It's, it's pure joy. That's the only way I can explain it. The second one was, again at the gym, listening to this composition and I saw her dancing and she was in a hall it was absolutely spectacular the hall there were no ends to the walls I mean they were just miles and miles and miles away and it was an absolutely wonderful vision she was happy Yeah, it leaves me speechless. Sorry for that. The brain shuts down. The brain shuts down either because I absolutely forget what I'm about to say or do, and that's because I was the most prolific alcoholic ever, because I'm so unique, remember? And then, or it's because my thoughts get so deep and so far. When I think about my mom and where she is and how I saw her just last year, and I'll share that with you later, reinforces all my beliefs. It's all very true. I wouldn't be able to sit here and speak about it and smile and have peace in my heart if I didn't fully believe there is a heaven and that's where my mom is. That there is a heaven and that's where your mom is and your dad is, where your brother and your sister are. Yeah. It's a good feeling. Anyway, back to the reading. July 24th, Ezekiel, like the appearance of a rainbow in a cloud on a rainy day, so was the appearance of the brightness all around it. This was the appearance of the likeness of the glory of the Lord. Ezekiel 1.28 The first words of the book of Ezekiel seem to give us the prophet's age. Now it came to pass in the thirteenth year. Ezekiel 1 1. According to the Numbers 4.23, Jewish priests began leading temple worship at age 30. But just when Ezekiel was ready to assume his life's work, he was seized in a raid and deported hundreds of miles to a Jewish refugee camp beside the Shabar River in Babylon. He was angry, disappointed, and bitter. Ezekiel 3.14 God's response was to open his eyes, giving him a glimpse of the heavenly throne itself and allowing him to see the appearance of the likeness of the glory of the Lord. Seeing this, Ezekiel fell on his face and listened as the Lord commissioned him to a ministry he had never anticipated, one that still benefits us to this day. There's an old hymn that says, one look at his dear face, all sorrow will erase. When our eyes are open to the Lord, everything else falls into place, takes shape, and begins to make sense. 
we would see Jesus, the great rock foundation, where on our feet were set with sovereign grace. That's from Anna Warner, author of Jesus Loves Me. All right, now we do Great is Thy Faithfulness. January 24th. Mandy just listened. They sat down with him on the ground seven days and seven nights, and no one spoke a word to him. Job 2.13 Marty had gotten an unexpected thank you for service to the company. A terse note that concluded, Your position has been terminated. After Marty had spent months fruitlessly searching for a job, his frustration finally got to him. Angrily, he screamed at God, Why did you do this to me? Don't you care? He continued his tirade until he noticed his dog Mandy cowering by a chair. Composing himself, he said, Come here, pup. You should be glad you're a dog. At least you can't get fired from being man's best friend. As he poured out his woes and talked to Mandy, the bitterness disappeared. David Beeble, the author who told this story, wrote, You might think the relief came from all the things he said to God, and certainly that was a part of it. But Mandy played a big part too. She didn't argue or offer solutions or advice. She just listened, wagging her tail and licking her master's hand. When Job's three friends saw his misery, they just sat with him, wept, and did nothing for seven days. But then they abandoned the wisdom of their silence. Sometimes we need to just weep with those who weep. Romans 12:15. Our listening ear may be what they need, so they can hear what God is saying to them. When our friends encounter suffering, we can help them if we're near. Some may need a word of comfort, others just a listening ear. That's really good stuff. I love these readings, absolutely. Absolutely.